crusty on the outside, super soft in the middle, light, airy, fluffy, pillowy bread. This is for capture, and I'm gonna show you how to make it. I'm gonna show you how to make my best ever for capture. Now, the thing about for capture bread that makes it so damn good, other than the taste, is that it's super simple to make. You don't need to do any kneading, you don't have to mess around with any bread shaping because it's all in one pan. It's real simple. So it's a great bread to make if you're not used to making bread or you're just getting into your bread making journey. However, that being said, there's a few steps involved to ensure that you have the best for capture bread. The ones that you see on Instagram, on Pinterest, the ones with that light, airy, fluffy texture in the middle. You don't want a flat for capture. No, you want it to be puffed up, nice and fluffy. So I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that. First thing you're gonna do is you're gonna get a bowl. And in that, we're gonna put some flour. We're gonna use all purpose flour. We're not gonna mess around with different types of flour. We're gonna keep this nice and simple as the capture bread should be. So we're gonna use 600 grams of flour, which is about four and a half cups, I believe. Into the flour, we're gonna mix some dry yeast. We're gonna do quarter a teaspoon. Get that in and give that a good mix around. Now in a separate jug, we're gonna do a mixture of water and salt. So you want 450 grams of warm water. Emphasis on the warm water. This is one of those key details that people often get wrong. If you use cold water, the yeast is gonna die. It's not gonna do its thing. You wanna heat up that yeast. You wanna give it a nice environment. So you wanna use warm water, not boiling, not scalding hot, just nice warm water water, 450 grams, which is two cups, two cups of water. Then we're gonna mix in some coarse sea salt. You want three quarters of a teaspoon of salt, mix that in. For all you maths aficionados out there, that's about 1% salt mixture in this. I mean, we're gonna be using a lot more when it comes to serving, but for now, it's a 1% mixture, okay? Mix that around, dissolve that salt in the water. Then you're gonna add that water, to your yeast and flour mix, as well as two tablespoons of olive oil, right? Give that a good little mix up. Use a spoon, get your fingers in there. Now this is a very high moisture bread. And what that means is it's a lot of water. And what that means is that it's very, very sticky, super sticky bread. So once you get your fingers in there, be prepared to have your fingers in there for quite a while. Maybe just use one hand. You know, I was doing this and trying to film. As you can see, it's pretty awkward because I've got to like hold the camera with one hand and then I'm trying to like mix with the other, but it is super sticky bread. Eventually you're gonna get to this like concrete mixture of dough. It looks like this. It's like gray and really sticky. So sticky that you can't knead it. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna do like a pinch and fold technique instead. Now here's me trying to show you the best I can with one hand, it's obviously better if you have one hand around the bowl and you have one on there. But what you, you can kind of see, what you're basically trying to do is pull the dough, pinch, pull, wrap it around itself, and then do it again from a different angle. Pinch, pull, wrap, pinch, pull, stretch. What this is doing is it's gonna stretch out the gluten. It's also gonna trap air in there. So keep doing this until you get like a nice smooth texture. The longer you do it, the more you'll be able to get a stretch on it without it breaking off. And then once it's all combined, that'll take you about five to 10 minutes to do that pinching and stretching technique. You're gonna take a damp towel, you're gonna put that over the bowl, and you're gonna leave it for 30 minutes. And when you come back to it, what you should have is a dough that has doubled in size. If it's not doubled in size, that's all right, because you're just gonna do that technique again. And for this focaccia, I did it about three times, okay? so. Damp towel, 30 minutes, stretch, pinch, pull, fold. Keep doing that. Put it back, rest a little bit. Keep doing it. For catch up, it's just a waiting game. People rush it way too much. You don't want to rush it. It's a waiting game. Now, once you get to this point where it's over doubled in size, it's a lot smoother, you want to make sure it's got some bounce. And what I mean by that is when you prod it and you move your finger, it should snap back. It should have some elasticity. Elasticity? Elasticity? Elastic, elastic, elasticity, elasticity. It should bounce back anyway, it should be stretchy. Then we're gonna cover it with some cling film and we're gonna stick it in the fridge for between 12 and 18 hours. Okay, if you really want, you can bake it at this point, but you'll get a flat for catcher. So this 18 hour wait that we're doing is gonna make sure it's nice and big and airy. It's gonna give the yeast 
time to ferment. It's going to be beautiful. So you know, do this at night time and then you can bake your bread in the morning. Always make the capture a day in advance. Now, once you take it out of the fridge in the morning, it should be pretty big, which important, I don't think I mentioned, but you want to use a big bowl. Because even if in the beginning you've got this little speckle of dough in the bottom of the bowl, by the end of it, it's going to fill the bowl. So make sure you get a big bowl. I will leave links in the description of the equipment I use, but big bowl because it's going to fill it. All right, you're going to have this huge fluffy dough. That's a good sign. Make sure it's got that bounce, that bounce still. Then you're going to grab a pan. Now I think this is an eight by 11 inch pan, but I'll also leave that in the description. It's pretty important for the amount of focaccia we're doing to fit the right pan. You don't want the pan to be too big and it to not fill it. And you also don't want it to be too small and it becomes too heavy and it collapses in on itself. So to make sure it's super light and fluffy, it needs to be the right weight of the catch off to the right pan. So I will leave a link in the description to the perfect pan for this, the catch off. Now, oil that pan, bit of olive oil, rub your hands over it, pour in your focaccia. We're gonna lightly stretch it out to fill the pan, stretch it into those corners. Don't force it too much. You might find that it snaps back a bit. It's been a little bit difficult. Like I said, electric, electricity. Like I said, it's very stretchy. So just be gentle with it. Don't force it, just push it in its corners. You might find that it's just really fighting back. It's not going in the corners like it did for me here. If that is the case, all you're gonna do is you're gonna stick a damp towel over it leave it let it prove 30 minutes bring it back try again keep doing that until you fill the corners now it's time to move on to dimpling so for this and it's really fun to do you know it's really satisfying dimpling the capture it's like physical asmr what you want to do is you're going to dip your fingers in some water and then you're just going to go in and push into it and and dimple it what's important here is you don't want to pierce the dough we spent a lot of time getting a lot of air into this. So the way to get around piercing it is just to dip your fingers in that water, get them wet, and then it won't stick to your fingers. Get them wet and just really go in, move your way up and down. You'll know if you're doing it right, if you get these little air bubbles on top of it, and it just, oh, then it's time to move on. What we're gonna do, you guessed it, we're gonna prove it again. This time, damp towel, we're gonna leave it for an hour, but somewhere warm. Now I find that for myself, my oven, when it's not on, is a nice warm place for it. You know, the door closes, it's dark, it's warm. Maybe yours is in the back of a cupboard. And then it is ready for topping and baking. So when it comes to the toppings, you can put whatever you want on it. You can put pizza toppings on it. You can put like tomatoes and spinach. You can put meat on there. You can put potatoes and carrots on there if you want. Whatever you want. What I'm going for, which is my favourite for capture topping, is coarse sea salt, rosemary, olive oil, and garlic. So the way I do that is I take some rosemary sprigs, sprinkle them on top, just loads of olive oil, just smother the thing in olive oil. Then I go in with the olives and I just place those. I push them in a little bit so they really sink in to the bread and I just get a bunch of salt, way too much salt. And I just put that all over the top. And now take some dried garlic and I'll just sprinkle that over the top as well. Like I said, whatever you want then we're gonna bake it. So temperatures and baking time. You want your oven to be 420 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 220 degrees Celsius, which is 200 degrees Celsius fan. And you're gonna put that in for 15 to 20 minutes. Keep an eye on it. Once it starts going a golden color, it's crusty on the outside, you know, it's good to go. Take it out of the oven, let it rest for about 20 minutes to cool down and to really keep its shape. Then you can take it out of the pan, you can start cutting it up, you can start enjoying it, you can check it, make sure it should be, look, it should look like this, where it's got really airy bubbles on the inside, it's super light, it's super fluffy. And then what I'll do is I'll just cut this into little squares and I'll serve it with another dollop of olive oil because the more olive oil, the better and another sprinkling of sea salt because this works absolutely perfect with plenty and plenty and way too much sea salt. So that's how I do it. So what's important here is just a lot of proving times. Don't pierce the dough, use warm water and just keep on proving. The longer you prove, the more airy it's going 
to be and top it with whatever you want. It's got quite a hearty top, so you can put heavy things on it and it still retains its shape. Serving suggestions, I would say anything that you can dip in works great. Olive oil, obviously. Can't get enough of olive oil with the capture, but you can also do it with things like balsamic vinegar or, you know, something acidic that cuts through that acidity. You can do it with things like soup, like a tomato soup with some focaccia dipped in there. All those little air holes that are going to work like a sponge and really absorb that soup. That'll be really good. Um, hummus, you know, cut it into thinner strips. Use it some hummus. You can also do focaccia pizza. Whatever your favourite pizza toppings are, put that on top. So like I'm a mushroom guy, so I put loads of tomato on top, mozzarella cheese, loads of mushrooms and have it like a pizza. Or my favourite thing is a sandwich. Cut it into nice squares, cut it lengthways. For my sandwich, I'll put rocket in there, halloumi, some fried halloumi, and I'll put like a red, fiery, spicy pesto in there. Close it together, it's so good, but you can put whatever you want in there. Put some ham in there, put an egg in there. It's the perfect sandwich bread. And that is how you make the best ever for capture. So let me know if you get on. And if you've got any questions, comment below and I'll be happy to assist where I can. Thank you very much.